Yeah. <laughs> Rock first home game for you in a while. Give us an idea of what the uh, what the energy is like being here defending the title in Australia. Yeah, it's uh, it's unreal to be here defending the belt in uh, home country. It's my son of mine. You know, uh, yeah. you no, know, I, I guess the biggest thing, biggest thing I can say is that I'm relaxed. It feels great. It's um, you know, I was at my house until yesterday, you know, with my kids and stuff, and yeah, you know, I feel really, really good. I imagine it comes along with more responsibility too, though. Right? I mean, I know you're used to main events and all the stuff that comes with that, but being here, I imagine there's even more. So is that a distraction at all? Is is you're trying to dial it in these last couple of days? You you know, there's a lot of pressure, obviously, fighting in the home country, and a lot of people are coming to it. Um, there's a lot of expectations, I guess, but I try not to let it affect me too much. It's uh. Just got to block it out, understand why I'm doing this, you know, what really matters and going in there and doing my best. On the flip side, the whole stadium pretty much will be behind you on, on, on Sunday. That, that must be a massive positive for yourself. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, my most memorable fight was in Rod Laver, so, you know, I'm expecting Sunday to go off. It's hard, like, the, the energy from that stadium and the crowd when I walked out last time was like, you could feel it, you know, it's, um, yeah, it was, it was unreal. You're coming from those battles with UL, I mean, Help us understand physically, mentally, psychologically where you are because I think everybody when they talk about you now, they're worried. Did those wars take something out of you, even if it's 1%? Did it take something from you? You know, I, I feel they should be worried, but for other reasons. I feel that Yoel gave me his best in 10 rounds and put him put me away. You know, and um, yeah, I went, I went 10 rounds with a monster. No one else has. And see, and then I think some people are saying, okay, now you got Kelvin Gaslam. Thank God it's not Yoel, but is that a dangerous mindset to think that this is some kind of a, a step down or, or an easier clash? No, it's definitely not a step down. I, I respect his abilities. He's a dangerous fighter. He's going to come in there hungry with nothing to lose. It's a, one of the most dangerous combinations. So, um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm giving him the respect he deserves. It is refreshing to have a different opponent other than Yoel, but, you know, here we are. How do you feel about Kelvin personally? He seems... He's, the way you guys both came up, man, you, you grinded your way to the top, you're both respectful, not big trash talkers or anything like that. Is there some kind of maybe respect for him or a like for him? Um, yeah, there's definitely respect for him. I have respect for him you know, as an athlete and as a person. You know, he's, he's very honorable in that, in that sense. But um, apart from that, I try not to think about it too much. Like, I, don't, I don't think about him. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, what about the, I think recently he said he's, he's predicting a first round knockout for mm. himself. Or what, do you, what do you make of those kinds? Well, you might. But, <laughs> you, you, you know, a lot of other people have said that. Yeah. You know, there's a club. Yeah. I mean, you're on a, you're on a nine-match winning streak right? going back five years. And as has been previously said, you've, been, you've taken on some of the biggest names in the division. Do you, does that give you that confidence that you can pretty much take anyone, anytime, any uh, situation? Not really. My confidence in that comes from my training mm. and, and, and how I perform and who I am. Mm. I, uh, I know I'm a good fighter. Mm. Uh, it's what I do. It's what I live. Yeah. So, um... Yeah, like every fight is dangerous. Every fight is by itself. You know, there's just because I beat so and so doesn't mean mm. I'm any better or any worse than anybody else. You know, it just it was my night, and that's it. And it takes back like five years. I mean, to the start of this amazing winning streak, you were, what, what, is there a certain moment or factor that sort of where you could pinpoint where it all came together for you to, to make it the fire that you are now? Oh, you know, I definitely contribute a lot of it to the team I'm surrounded mm. with now. You know, and, and the guys that surround me. My, my team is the best in the world. My coaching staff is the best in the world. And I've, I've mentioned that a bunch of times. Um, yeah, I contribute a lot of a lot of my wins and consistency and, and hard work to them. And uh, it's your, obviously your first ever title defense. It must be a pretty special moment for yourself. Oh, yeah, it's a very special moment. Yeah. You know, I think the biggest thing is that I'll, I've missed home. I've wanted mm. to fight here for a long time. And to, to be able to come home and defend my belt, you know, have... Uh, I guess in my career, one of the biggest fights yeah. to date. It's like, um, yeah, it's pretty unreal. I mean, did you? I, I don't know. Did you speak to other, you know, champions about the way they prepared for their 
tile defense or just go the way you do? Yeah. I live I live under the radar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My, my area barely has internet. <laughs> if you were to tell the Rob Whitaker who was fighting in the CFC that you'd eventually be defending the title at Rod Laver and would have sold it out quicker than anyone else before, what do you think that person would have said? Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> would have hoped but never never truly invested in. So you never really thought this was something to strive for when you were fighting when you first started your career? Mate, when I was when I was younger, you know, like a young adult, my, my biggest ambition was to try and live by myself and, and get and like, be able to pay the rent. You know, I come from a housing commission background, so like that for me was my time to have my own car. When I got my first car, like that was it. I was you know, I'd made it, you know what I mean? And then the next one was like, okay, let's just try and get a place of my own so I can, you know, be independent I guess. That, and, uh, yeah, you know, I've come so far from that point. Yeah, I would never believe myself. Now you've got local uh, boxing legend Jeff Fennick saying that you're the number one fighter in the country. How do you did you see his comments, or what did you think about that? Do you feel like you're the best fighter that Australia's ever seen? Because that's what he believes. Uh, I, I, I I would never call myself that. It's um, you know, I, I strive to be the best fighter. Ever. Like that's that's my, that's my goal. Like my I, lo I love I love fighting. I love to fight, and um, you know, bettering your skill set to get more wins and to fight better and to win is uh, you know it's, it's my goal. It's my ambition. But to to receive accolades from for someone like that is is massive. You know, I'm, I'm deeply honoured, and you know, I guess I'm doing something right. Israel Adesanya said the other day that he believes that the reason why this event sold out so quickly the way they did is because of his fight with Anderson Silva. He kind of said to you, you're welcome for the paving points, for the accolades. What do you think about that? Do you think there's any truth to it? Thank you. <laughs> like, I, don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know. Like, uh, yeah, it is what it is. But, like, yeah. <laughs> Rob, he, also, he also said recently that it's in his best interest if you win on Sunday. Obviously, inferring that... If you win yours, there'll be a, a, a down the line of potential trans Tasman super fight between the both of you. And how do you sort of see that? Um, yeah, you know, truth be told, like almost every every time I've jumped on an Australian car, it's sold out. Mm. Like before he was on the scene. Yeah, yeah. You know, so uh, I guess the, like the super fight on Sunday because I'm there. Yeah, yeah. Would it would it excite you more if you got a chance to fight Anson Silva over Izzy? Because that would be a big fight as well. I, I'm not thinking that far ahead, mate. Like, yeah, Sunday's too close, too hard. How do you compare Kelvin's resume to your own? Ah, it's very similar. He's, he's beaten some big names. He's, he's young, he's hungry, he's tough. He hits like a truck. He's got good, well-rounded skill sets. So um, I think we go in there very, 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 very even. You know, it's just, uh, yeah, I'm going to bring the best Robert Whittaker to date on Sunday. And, uh, you know, I'm dangerous on a bad day. What, what did you think of Kelvin Gaslam going over to Resilience Training Center, sort of using Dan Kelly's facility? Dan's a bit of an ally of yours with a fellow mm. Aussie. He's going in there using his facilities. Didn't know. <laughs> to be honest. And, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> like, uh, Dan's a good bloke. I still like him. But um, I live in Sydney. <laughs> so. I mean, Gaslam's last fight was a, a, a similar scenario in that he went over to Brazil to fight Jacare, and you know Jacare had obviously had the home sport, and he won that. Do you sort of think that could hold him in good stead for, a, for this? Sort of, I mean, it's a similar because you in Australia. No, it's it's a fight. Mm. You know, that was a close fight. They're both tough guys. Kelvin walked away with the win. That's just how it is. Mm. Someone has to. Um, he's coming over here. You know, it's it's a long trip. It's an annoying trip. I, to be honest, I'm not even. I don't really care what he's doing or how he feels. I feel great, so I'm going to go in there great, yeah. and uh, that's about it. Yeah. You mentioned the energy of Rod Laver. It was fantastic last time, but you fought at Eddie Hot as well, which I guess is Marvel Stadium now. On your list of things to do is is going back to that big stadium and maybe headlining a show there. Is that something that you want to do? Um, not really. Like. I haven't thought about it at all. I'm sorry. <laughs> Fair enough. Hey, you know, you talked about you know early. It was just paying rent and getting a car that drove you. What, what drives you now? I mean, it's you've, imagine you can pay rent. Imagine you, you yeah. can afford a car uh, too. This is how I live. This is who I am. You know, I'm a warrior. Uh, yeah. You know, this is this is my path, and I'm enjoying it. Do you think about what you want your legacy to be? I mean, you've got this incredible win streak, but now you're really just starting this new chapter as champion, you know, and, and you got you well behind, you get to one. Do you think about what you want your legacy to be? I have a legacy, you know, and uh, 
but three little beautiful legacies. Mm -hmm. And they can they can grow up and they can see the things that I've done and where I came from. And you know, just knowing that is enough for me. And I mean, it's, it's all uh, relatively quickly um, when you look at some, some fighters can fight into their early forties. You, you're 28 yourself, but do you feel like you're you know, so only the, I guess could only be just the start of something very special for yourself. Yeah, you know, I, I believe I'm still in a growing period. Yeah. Um, I'm still understanding who I am as, as not just a martial artist and a combat athlete, but who I am as a person. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I, I have a lot of good years in me still, and I'm excited to, to, for what the future holds. Talking about fighting in Melbourne, do you think fans don't appreciate how much the travel takes out of a fighter? Say you have to fight in America. Do you think fans don't appreciate, like, that's a real big adjustment period that you need to Oh, make? definitely, definitely. I, I think sometimes the fighters don't appreciate how, <laughs> how hard it is. The, um, yeah, traveling abroad like is, is a nightmare. It doesn't affect everybody differently. You get the longer they're just like, I flew in yesterday and feel great. Yeah, cool. Like, uh, not me. So with that being said, do you hope, you know, a win on Saturday night, you can convince the UFC that it's set up. I don't need to fight anywhere else other than Australia. They know that. Have you had a chance to check out the new belt yet? I mean, you'll be mm. fighting for a new belt, right? <laughs> I haven't even looked at it. <laughs> you got any messages from the uh, TAFE students that you've been working with lately, mate? Yeah, they, give, they always give me their best. You know, it, it's, it's been great working with those guys, working with the, the, the great Aboriginal pathways. It's, it's, it's unreal. You know, I, I get a whole new perspective on, on, on life as a whole when, whenever I deal with them. And uh, obviously when I go in, they understand I've got a big fight looming up. And they're like, good luck. They're always with me to the best. And, uh, yeah, you know, a lot of love from them. Just quickly, who, who wins in a game of Fortnite between you and Kelvin Gaslam? Be honest here, we want, we want a prediction with a bit of detail. <laughs> um, I don't know how good he is. I know that I'm trash, but... very modest when you <laughs> Just be honest, we know you're very good, you've got some good rankings. No, Are I, you predicting a quick... I, I am trash, I am trash. I play, I play a lot with a friend of mine, um, a training partner, Bradley Fulmer. And um, he definitely holds up the team, trust me. Thank, Thank you, Robin. Thank you so much for coming out. Good luck. Peace. Yeah. Appreciate yeah. it, guys. Cheers.